Hi guys, I'm Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. And today, I've got a recipe that's great for tailgating. It's good if you're going to a gathering and you want something that you know you can have. It's an appetizer you can have when you're having people over. It's gluten-free sausage balls. Now, sometimes you'll, you're somewhere and you have a sausage ball and it's dried out. Or you can't have them at all because, you know, they're made with bisquick or baking mix. I've got a gluten-free recipe that's going to stay tender. It's going to have a little bit of moisture in it. And more importantly, you can have it because it's gluten-free. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started on these sausage balls. So to start with, I have one pound of breakfast sausage. This is mild, but you could use spicy if you wanted. You could use regular Italian sausage if you wanted. Those would all be great. And to that, we're gonna add a cup and a fourth of gluten-free pancake and baking mix. Now, this is from Aldi's. It runs about $2 a box in my store. And what I've found is that in looking at the ingredients is it pretty much lines up with gluten-free Bisquick. Uh, you could use gluten-free Bisquick if you want or some other gluten-free all-purpose baking mix. Uh, but this for $2 a box as opposed to Bisquick, which I think is about 4 or $5 a box, this works great for us. So we want to add a cup of that and another fourth of a cup. We also want to add a couple cups of shredded cheese. So I'm going to add the rest of this bag. You can use any kind of cheese you want. Uh, we like using the cheddar line of stuff, whether it be a blend or uh, just finely sharp, finely grated sharp cheddar like this. So there's over a cup there probably, and we'll add a little bit more. There we go, this is a three cup bag, so that's probably about right. You want to preheat your oven to 375. That's what they're going to cook at. And then to help keep these tender and moist and not like little rocks when they cool off, I've got eight ounces of softened cream cheese. So we're going to add that in there. This is going to make them creamy. It's going to give them a little bit of moisture. So now we want to mix it all together and we'll start making our sausage balls. And it looks like it's not going to work for me with a spatula yet, so we'll just get our clean hands in there and work it in that way. Okay, we've got everything mixed up and I just used my hands. If you wanted to keep those clean, if you have latex gloves, you could throw those on there. My wife will do that a lot if we're making meatloaf because she doesn't want to deal with the raw meat. So you could do that and keep your hands a little cleaner. Uh, so now we need to make them into sausage balls and get them on the baking sheet. So I just have a large baking sheet here and to make cleanup a little easier, I just lined it with foil. You could use parchment paper, you could just leave it as it is if you want. And I'm also going to use a cookie scoop and this is about one and a half tablespoons and this will make sure that my sausage balls are all close to the same size and help them cook evenly. And the other thing it's going to do is it's going to make it much quicker for me to make them. I am going to roll them into balls but I'll just have to drop the scoop on at a time and then go back over to make the sausage balls and that'll just take a minute. I also do the same technique when I make meatballs. As you can see, this is making quick work of it. I don't use any salt and pepper in the recipe. There's enough flavor in that sausage and salt in the sausage and the, and the baking mix and the cheese that you don't need any. Sometimes I do spray the foil with a little bit of cooking spray, which I 
think I might do anyway. Sometimes the cheese likes to stick. So guys, once you have them on your cookie sheet, we want to roll them into balls. So if you dip your hands in some water, that'll help the balls to roll a little easier. They won't stick as much. Okay, we've got everything rolled out. So we are gonna put these in our 375 degree oven for 20 minutes or so, and then we'll take them out and give them a try. Okay, y'all, it's been 20 minutes. Our sausage balls have been cooked, and now it's time to give them a try. So I will say they did wanna to stick to the bottom, so make sure you spray that cookie sheet down uh, with some nonstick spray. That'll help them release better. Uh, they also did puff up, but there's plenty of room on there for them to grow a little bit. So we are okay with that. So I'm gonna move you guys closer so you can see them and we'll give them a try. So guys, there is one of the sausage balls and they flattened out a little bit, but look at how golden they are at the bottom. They're nice and tender. They're not little rocks like sometimes you can get sometimes that people make. Let's cut one open and you guys can see how they look on the inside. So they're nice and dough-like on the inside as far as fluffy. See the steam coming off of them? So let's give it a try. All right, again. Here's our sausage ball. Let's give it a taste. They're tender. They're not dried out. You can taste that cheese in there. The sausage, a little bit of spice from the sausage. The bottom's a little crispy because it's golden from that cheese and the crisping up. You could bake them a little bit longer if you wanted, if you didn't want them quite so, so soft. Another, you know, two or three minutes would probably work. Uh, like I said, use your own sausage, use hot sausage, mild sausage, breakfast sausage, Italian sausage, mix it up a little bit. Mix up your cheese a little bit, use a blend or use just sharp cheddar like I did today. Uh, these are a great little recipe for your tailgates, for your holiday parties, for when you wanna take something to a party and you're gluten-free and you know you can eat it. They do not reheat overly well. We like to nuke them the next day if there's any leftovers, uh, but they're not as good as the first day. Um, they tend to get a little chewy in the microwave. So remember that uh, they are not gritty uh, like gluten-free products can be, so you don't get that. And one of the main components in the gluten-free baking mix that I used as well as in Bisquick is rice flour, which can lead to some grittiness, but these are not gritty. So you don't get any of that in there either. So I don't think your friends are going to notice that they're gluten-free. They just may notice that you're actually eating them. So guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like down below. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of my other videos. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.